like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell in the upper right hand corner. Follow me on all forms of social media. Check me out at thedrummerguy.com and enjoy the following presentation. Is this Josh? Yes, it is. Hi, this is Diamante. Hi, how's it going? I'm awesome. Sorry, um, sorry for not being on time. Oh, not a problem. Uh, I'm just uh, thankful for you being able to take the time to do this interview. Yeah, of course. Oh, well, awesome. Well, uh, of course, uh, we're here to be able to uh, find out everything in the world of Diamante right now. I mean, it's amazing to see everything that's going on with you right now. I mean, the, the full release of your brand new album, uh, being able to be out on this uh, great North American tour that you're currently a part of. I mean, how does it feel to be able to have all of this going on for you right now? I mean, you know, it feels really surreal. Like sometimes I really have to step back and, and really reflect on everything that's going on. But at the same time, um, you know, the last two years, I've spent them in recording studios and in writing sessions. So finally being able to be on the road, you know, I'm just so happy to be out because it's really what I was dying to do for the last two years. So I'm just trying to take the most out of every second that I'm out here. Yeah, and it's, it's great to see that as well, too. And it's amazing to see how well you've been able to catch on, too. I mean, all the reviews that I've been seeing from uh, the, sh the shows on the tour that you're currently doing, uh, the album reviews that I've seen so far. I mean, that it's just so cool to be able to see all of that happening. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, this tour has been so much fun um, because, you know, it's with Bad Wolves and Pramash is new and we're all on the same label, so it really feels like family almost. Yeah, and that's such a great thing about that tour, too, is uh, even though you are all on the same label, it's three very different sounding bands, which makes for a very fun night. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's really cool, too, because I get to talk to the fans at the end of the night and that's really like the overall consensus of what I've been hearing is, um, you know, like, wow, like, you guys, this is the coolest lineup ever. And, like, even though you guys all sound different, it, it works. Yeah, and, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm a huge fan of that, you know, it's just like, an, instead of just going to see three of the exact same uh, bands in one night, or sometimes even longer, depending right. on the tour, I mean, it's great to be able to hear all of these different sides and show that uh, everyone is able to appreciate different styles of rock music. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with that. So, with that, I mean, there's, um, obviously, uh, still building your name, and it's grown bigger and bigger from here, but how did this all begin for you? Um, well, I've been singing my whole life, you know, like since I was six years old. That's all I ever did when I was a kid. Is I would just lock myself in my room and sing for hours. But um, the first time I was really on stage and, and I knew that I wanted to perform, I was 10. And um, I was Sandy in a musical production of Grease at my school. And, you know, I was I was a really shy kid growing up. Um, I maybe had, like, you know, like my little circle of friends. But for the most part, I was very, um, you know, reserved and quiet. And I, like, the second I up on that stage I was like wow you know I think like I've never felt so empowered and I knew that's what I wanted to do um, and then when I was 13 uh, I moved out to LA with my entire family and I you know started playing shows on the Sunset Strip when I was 14 and you know like the Whiskey and the Roxy and um, started releasing original music but it wasn't until when I was 17 when I put out um, a Dirty Blonde EP independently that things really started I think moving and since then it's kind of been like a snowball effect yeah, and you know, it's just, it's so cool to be able to, to hear that as well. I mean, being able to, uh, going from being in a stage production to Greece to being able to be out on a tour of Bed Wolves and From Ashes to New. I mean, two very different yeah. styles of music, but it's great to see that versatility that you got going on. Yeah, and I think the most interesting part about that is, um, you know, a lot of people don't comment on my stage presence, and I think I really picked up and learned, uh, you know, doing that from doing musical theater because a lot of the time you don't have a microphone and um, you really have to project and you really have to make your presence known. So I think all that musical theater training really actually works into, you know, a rock star style performance. Oh, very much so. I mean, when you go to a show, I mean, there's some bands that are able to just uh, stand right there and just play the music and they're able to put on a great show, but sometimes you want to actually go out and see more behind it. You want to be able to see the lights and sound and uh, all these other things going on uh, amongst the band. So the fact that you're uh, incorporating that more, I mean, that's so cool to hear that. Yeah, thank you. Oh, not a problem. So when you started um, divulging more into, uh, in, instead of uh, other works, uh, working on your own material, what was that like for you to finally like uh, really start pursuing your style of music? Um, it was a process, you know, um, like when I was, when I was a kid, 
it was a lot of me meeting the producers and the the instant idea was like, okay, we need to make this girl pop, you know? She's, she's got to be pop. So it took a little bit for me to actually really be able to do the music that I wanted to do. And um, that's why, even with this album that just came out, it's really cool because it takes from different genres, but it really is like the ultimate definition of who Diamante is. Oh, God, that's... You know, again, you know, it's just, it's so cool to be able to see how uh, you were able to adapt to these situations and everything. And, you know, just like, again, you know, it's just like uh, the more that I listen to this album, which of course is available now, you know, just like being able to go from start to finish. I, I love the versatility that's going on through this album. I mean, there's some great heavier Thank moments you. on there. There's some cool melodic moments. I mean, uh, the cover of Heart was fantastic to hear as well. I mean, it's great to be able to hear all these sides of you. Yeah. Um, and I think that really just takes part in, you know, what I listen to, um, like, like when I was a kid, I listened to pop. I listened to alternative all the time now. So, you know, you have those moments of pop sensibility and you have those, um, you know, moments in the instrumentation where it goes a little bit alternative. So I think it's cool, you know, it shows all these different sides. And with that, uh, how did it come about with making Coming In Hot so the, the first single and the title of the album? Um, it's funny, Coming In Hot was actually one of the first songs I wrote for the album. And, you know, the second I heard the title, I knew it had to be the album title because, um, A, it's very, you know, direct and to the point but it's also kind of a metaphor, this being my debut album, of me really coming into the music industry. It's like, you know, I'm not coming in slowly or timidly, you know, I'm coming in hot. And uh, that's, that's how I knew it had to be the title. Yeah, and it really does fit in with the rest of the album, too, because it, it, it almost kind of leads you on, in a sense, because you imagine more sounds like that. But once you start to, like, really divulge into the album, you're able to see all these great different sides of you, and you are able to come in hot in so many different directions. Yeah, yeah, and I think... I think a big part of that was my producer, Howard Benson, he really pushed me to, you know, be vulnerable and to write about things that I had always been really afraid to write about. You know, previous to this release, I had put out, you know, a couple of singles and they're all very fierce and fun and in your face. And while that is a side to me, there were still a lot of sides that I wasn't showing the world. So that's why I love this record because it's so multidimensional. And with that, I mean, uh, how long was the songwriting process for you when it came to this album as far as like uh, the writing, the lyrics and the musicals? How long? <laughs> um, I think the overall you know, period of time of writing and recording was about 18 months, so it was a long time. Um, and the thing is, I didn't you know, write all the music and then record it. I was writing and recording at the same time. And instead of writing with dance players, I would go and do different writing sessions every single day with brand new people. And um, I got to meet a lot of new people that way and better work with a lot of new people. So at the beginning, it was a lot of trial and error and really trying to find the right people that I was vibing with and you know, really honing in on the right sound. And with that, when did you know that it was starting to go in the right direction when you have that uh, very distinct writing style? I think, I think it actually really started coming together um, with Coming In Hot, you know? Uh, it really has that cool 80s vibe and it kind of just started coming together from there and, um, you know, even with the 80s thing, we really also wanted to make sure that it was um, modern and contemporary, so... Um, yeah, I think I think Coming In Hot was really the first song. Yeah, and that's another great thing I really do love about this album. I mean, I mean, obviously with the versatility and diversity that's going on in this album, uh, the fact that you're able to uh, do all these great callbacks to other forms while still having that modern edge to it, I mean, it's hard to perfect that, but it really sounds like you've been doing that. Yeah, well, thank you so much. I mean, I knew, you know, it's, I'm so inspired by that decade of music, but I knew that the album had to sound like it was you know, 2018. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, again, you know, just like uh, from the songwriting aspects of it, uh, the, the production, uh, the, the the great lyrical content that's going on there. I mean, there's something for everybody on this album. And it's great to be able to see that you had that in mind as well. You know, just like being able to be vulnerable and being able to be diverse at the same time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So with that, I mean, how does it feel to finally be able to be out on a tour like this, being able to have a brand new full album out and being able to play those songs live? It's so cool. Um, you know, I thought of being on the you know, the album came out, and I would look out into the crowd, and a lot of people would be singing the words to the song. Um, and, you know, I went out on tour in December, and I was playing a lot of this new material. So it's cool now to actually have this music out in the world, because now more and more people will be singing the song, you know, in the crowd. And with that, I mean... Uh, obviously, with uh, w when you're on a tour, you're obviously uh, always striving to get bigger and better with every show. How are you f personally feeling about like uh, the full band right now, this far into the tour? It's awesome. Um, you know, it usually takes a couple of shows to really get in the zone, and I feel like right now um, it's just been gelling so well. And um, you know, when I get into the zone, it's like I don't want to stop. <laughs> I just want to be on tour, you know, for ten months straight because you know, once you're in it, you're in it. 
With that, uh, have you noticed like uh, any particular songs that are like really catching on live? Yeah, um, I think War Cry is always a crowd favorite. Um, I closed the set with that song, so people are really into that one. Um, um, Had Enough is also a great one live. Um, but right now I only do 30 minutes set, and it'd be really cool, you know, when I play longer sets, to incorporate some of the slower ones like Black Heart and I'm Sorry. But uh, right now it's very like hard hitting and fast paced. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. I mean, especially when you're on a tour with bands like Bad Wolves and from Ashes to New, you want to make sure that uh, you're, I mean, you're not separating yourself too far from what the night is going to enfold, but you also want to be able to show yourself off. So, you know, like uh, yeah. focusing on more of the heart-hitting songs, I mean, it's definitely a good approach for this tour. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So with that, I mean, obviously uh, with this tour hitting so many uh, different areas in North America, how, how does it feel to be able to travel the way that you have on this tour? Uh, it's awesome, especially because a lot of this tour has been on the Coast and you know, me being an East Coast girl, it feels so cool to be back over here. Um, I've been able to see a lot of places that I've actually never been to, and that's you know, my favorite thing about going is being able to be in a new city every night and to experience new things every night. So it's been a lot of fun, yeah. I mean, that's gonna be such a great feeling, too. I mean, especially when you're on a tour like this as well. I mean, when you're able to go out on night, you're able to set the tone for the night, making sure everyone's having yeah. fun, and then in between shows, you know, like uh, being able to explore the country as well. I mean, some areas you may not have ever been in some places uh, like you said yeah. being able to go back home again yeah like um one of my favorites is actually portland maine i had never been there and i you know had lobster rolls and i walked around and i explored and i you know went to the dock but then you know days like today i'm in lancaster and i actually played this venue um back in 2015 so it's cool to also come back to the places oh absolutely so with that said as well i mean obviously uh, when you're getting to be on a tour like this i mean the whole thing is a one huge learning experience as well as uh, of course uh, hopefully having a great time as well what have you learned personally on this tour hmm. that's a good one um i mean if anything i've learned that i love touring even more <laughs> and um i'm you know like i said uh when you're playing so many shows every night you really you really develop as a performer so i've just been learning about myself you know like um what i do on stage that i like what i need to work on so it's, it's constantly a learning experience so with that as well i mean for uh people that are checking this out for the first time or uh they're going to be checking one of the last remaining dates on this tour uh what should people expect from your set? A lot of headbanging. <laughs> A lot of scare going all over the place, and uh, just, you know, 110% energy and pure rock and roll. It's a good time. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, and again, you know, it's just like, it's so cool to be able to see this. You know, it's just like, uh, again, I keep talking about it, you know, just like uh, the diversity that's going on through the album and the fact that you are able to uh, adapt to these situations, you know, like uh, touring with uh, more hard-hitting bands like that. And then uh, I imagine with uh, the upcoming tours when uh, you're able to have more set time or when you're touring with other bands that you're able to be yeah. able to show off more more of what you're capable of. Yeah, you know, and like even go out an acoustic and maybe drip it down somewhere in the set. Oh, very much so. So with that said, is there uh, anything planned f uh, for the rest of the year as far as touring? Yeah, so um, I'm actually going to be going out again with Bad Wolf on their tour with Five Finger Death Punch, uh, Breaking Benjamin, and Nothing More. Do you think Hear Me Now with them, which is uh, what I did back in May when they were out on tour with, um, you know, Shine Down. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And then the goal is to just keep touring in the fall and hopefully, you know, cross over to Europe. That would be my ultimate dream. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, Europe is such a great place to be able to uh, tour with music and, you know, being able to explore so much of, like, the histories of all the cities that are going on. And the, the fans are so receptive to music over yeah. there. It's so cool. But, yeah. You know, one day, um, and also other big ones for me would be Latin America and Japan. <laughs> I'd love to go to Japan. Oh, yeah. I'd love to see what the reception is in the live setting to what you do over there in Japan. I mean, that'd be really cool. Yeah. So, uh, uh, with that as well, I mean, obviously, you know, it's just uh, sometimes touring can take a lot out of you. I mean, especially when uh, you're doing some very long treks in between cities. Uh, how do you pass the time when you're in between shows and on the road? Um, you know, it's important for me to, like, have those rest days. So, um, like, on days off, I make sure that I, I get a lot of sleep. And, um, you know, just to kill the time when we're driving, you know, and just listen to a bunch of different music. You get to discover a lot of new bands when you pass the ox court around. Um, but it's cool. I mean, so far, I don't feel like I'm, you know, dead yet. <laughs> I still feel good. 
Oh, and that, that's great to hear that, too. I mean, especially, you know, like when some treks, you know, it's just like, especially when you're like going through the Rocky Mountains and you have to like either go to the east or west of that, you know, it's just like that can take so many hours out of you. And uh, the fact that you are able to adapt to that situation as well and, you know, being able to keep those spirits up and, you know, just making sure that yeah. the shows are going to be as great as they can possibly be. Yeah, and it also really depends um, who you're on tour with. So, you know, if you're on tour with great people, which I am, and, you know, the vibe is good, then it, it makes it so much more fun. Oh, very much so. And I think a lot of people forget that as well. I mean, or at least they don't necessarily think about it, you know, just like uh, making sure that you're uh, touring with the right group of musicians, making sure that you're touring with other bands that you're able to adapt mm -hmm. with and, you know, just making the whole touring experience as fun as it can possibly be. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's great to be able to see that. You know, it's just like uh, hearing everything that's going on right now with uh, this uh, current tour of Bad Wolves and from Ashes to uh, uh, the upcoming work that you're going to be doing with Bad Wolves on their uh, next touring and you know just like uh, all the future stuff that's going to be going on with uh, your personal work as well i mean it's great to see that your stars just uh, continuing to rise and rise you know the, the audience getting bigger and better every time i mean it's just yeah. it's so cool to be able to see that you know just in this amount of time well thank you so much oh not a problem and with that uh, i again uh, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to be able to talk to me about everything that you got going on right now you know in in the midst of this amazing tour that you got going on uh, all, every all the future stuff that's going to be going on right now and of course uh, talking about uh, the brand new album coming in hot which is available now uh, uh, just a really fun uh, hard hitting and sometimes emotional uh, hitting album that I think a lot of people would be able to enjoy in all different sides and I really appreciate you taking the time to be able to talk to me of course thank you so much oh not a problem uh, before we wrap things up here is there anything else you'd like to mention that I hadn't brought up yet um no I think I think I we pretty much covered a lot of things 